All right, we're just about to get started here. Thank you for joining me today. I am Jason, the creator of the Caladagia universe and the creator of Legends of Caladagia, the space combat miniatures game, as well as Caladagia Fleet Commander, the tabletop game of planetary invasion, as you just saw. I'm going to be continuing my artwork here of a character from a universe called a Krylin. And this is part number five, I believe I'm counting right. Yes. So it's about part number five in my series here of this character. I, for about the next hour, I'm going to be going ahead and streaming some of the artwork I'm going to be working on him. What you see right now is actually the reference image I've been building off of. The actual artwork is over here. And he's kind of in mid-phase of what's going on. So let's first of all get the basic stuff out of the way here. Like I mentioned, I'm Jason, the creator of the Caladagia universe. I am working on a second generation Microsoft Surface Pro using the GIMP software version 2.8.6. The few minor versions behind the most recent version, but you know, it still works great because it's, it's more about the major versions that really matter in this case. This is version 2.8.6. And what I'm going to be working on tonight is this helmet design in terms of how I approach the perspective of the helmet, how I'm handling the shading, because the helmet's a combination of curved surfaces as well as flat surfaces, and how I broke the helmet down into faces. But first, let's, let me go through what I've been up to since the last time I was streaming. I did a little bit of work on this, not a lot. I mainly just tweaked some of the shading of the armor on the over here on the left-hand side of the armor from, as we're looking at the picture. Uh, the reason I did that, I kind of what I originally did is I kind of duplicated the shading from left to right, and I realized it's actually not correct because the light source is coming from the upper right-hand corner of the artwork here. This nice scribbly blob of stuff is the light source, and which would mean that these, this right shoulder here, from our perspective, is going to be brighter than the left shoulder because the right shoulder is facing the light source the left shoulder is facing away from the light source um, so that is why I actually ended up darkening the left hand side of the armor a little bit but all in all the same tutorial I did last time more or less works it's just I drew it from a slightly incorrect light source perspective now when it comes to the actual helmet I created what I had did last time for the vest which is a face mask I pretty much identified the different faces that you see are, are visible right now and I colored them in different colors so we're going to be using that to select the different faces individually for lighting purposes but first let me talk a little bit about how I got it at this angle so let me jump back over to my reference design here and here's what I'm going to be talking about um, Elendar that's the name of this character his helmet he's basically looking a little bit down at the ground right now. So there's a little bit of perspective work going on here. So let me explain how I broke that down and how I kind of drew the helmet from this perspective that we're looking at. So let's, okay, now for real, let's jump over to our reference artwork. I'm just kind of working on a just extra layer. Oh, hey Ryan, how you doing? Anything exciting going on with you tonight, Ryan? Conductor Productions is my tabletop battlefield co-host, and technically I can still say that because I recorded an episode last night. And also, I believe, should you be releasing an episode of Tales of a Hollow right about now, instead of watching me? But anyway, so, okay, so let's break down what was going on with the perspective of this helmet. So when you're looking at it from the angle he was at, we're essentially, if you want to imagine, here's our helmet. We're looking at it kind of like this angle and drawing the arrow. That's approximately, not bad, see they're really, no, I haven't actually watched it yet. I just, I got I went running, got home, ate dinner, and now I'm streaming stuff. I'll, I'll watch tonight when I'm, after I'm done here. All right, so anyway, we're looking at the, uh, you can, oh, by the way, oh. Oh, that was what that post on Facebook was. Okay, that's, yeah. You can drop a link in the chat if, to it right here, Ryan, if you want, in case anyone else wanders in. Um, so we've got... So we're looking at it basically from this angle here. Now, if you think about it from this perspective, we're going to see a couple things. First of all, 
if let me draw this little section like this. So this back half of the helmet is essentially flat per se. Um, the sides are flat, which means from a forward perspective, you're actually not going to see this side of the helmet because you imagine as they go further back. From your perspective, they're going to kind of, the face are going to kind of curve and point towards each other. So you're actually not going to see the sides of the helmet, which if you look at my face diagram here, you don't see the sides of the helmet. Because essentially the sides of the helmet are somewhere, are kind of sloping back like this. And that's why you don't actually see them. Um, next, because of the perspective we're looking at, even though, you know, this, the bottom of the helmet is essentially parallel because of how we're looking at it this point here is going to actually appear lower than this point here and once again you can see that over here on the final artwork here's the front there's the back and they're visibly lower now this is just a very brief overview of perspective perspective is a crazy complex digital painting or any kind of artwork, artwork actual concept and it's, it's kind of so cut so it is fairly complex to the point where it literally took to the early renaissance for artists to actually start figuring out perspective that's one of the big things you started seeing around i think it's around the 12 to 1300s the end of the middle ages early renaissance where he's actually finally started seeing perspective correct perspective for the first time in in western european art so it is actually kind of a crazy somewhat convoluted concept but anyway so that'll give you an idea of more or less how I was approaching this one. There's, you know, there's details, of course, but that's just a, a very brief overview of perspective and how it applies to this particular angle with the helmet. Next, the other thing you'll notice here with the Krylon helmet, this side, they're asymmetrical. And that's just the way the Krylon helmets are. Excuse me. It's not actually me being a terrible job of painting in this case. It is actually how the Krylon helmets are designed. They have sensors on one side, usually lights or uh, infrared sensors. There's different things they use. You can read about it in Silex Road and Battle for, the Battle for Silex series, which is a short story featuring another Krylon character. He was wearing this full Phoenix combat system that we keep referencing over here. <laughs> Shameless self-promotion yet again. That's all I ever do. Okay. So that's another thing to think about. And then, finally, let me just get rid of my little s scribbly thing here. And like I mentioned, what you're looking at here, this is a face mask diagram. This the different colors are basically laying out where the different faces of the helmet are. This is just like what I did for the vest. And I'm going to do one additional step here. Which, as you can see at the top, the face mask actually goes outside of the artwork for the helmet. So all I'm going to do, let's go to the helmet here. I've done this before. Using the select by color, which is a little red, blue, green hand pointing thing up here. Click outside the artwork for the helmet. Let's go select. Now we'll just leave it the way it is. Just go edit, or sorry, then select our layer of helmet faces so the helmet faces is on a separate layer with the opacity turned around turned down a little bit so you can kind of see the the helmet artwork through the um, face mask and then let's go edit cut hmm, my touchpad keeps losing connection reconnecting to chat reconnecting to chat reconnecting to chat uh, hopefully I'm still online Select none. Okay, search like service pro still has Wi-Fi. Oh, coming back online. Okay, so anyway, I just kind of trim down the face mask to actually match the um, shape, uh, proper shape of the helmet. Now, of course, this face mask is going to be used to handle the lighting as it reflects off the various portions of the helmet. And to get an idea of what we're dealing with here, let me jump out a second. My monitor kind of crapped out. The monitor I'm referring to of what I'm, how I'm watching the thing, watching the chat room and stuff. So I'm going to make sure that comes back up. What you're looking at here 
Um, the, perp the thin purple line here is a flat face. There's actually a small little space between the edge of the mask and the helmet, and that's just the way Krylon helmets are designed. Also, this blue area up here, this is also a flat face. It's kind of facing more or less towards the camera. Once again, it's separation of the visor from the outside of the helmet. Krylon helmet design thing. Uh, the red and green faces here are also both flat. There's going to be some sensors there, a little bit of detail I'm going to draw in there with lighting and other things. The yellow, blue, and yellow face down here are more or less flat. They do slope a little bit inwards. But due to the fact they kind of slope not relative, per se, to the light source, they're more or less going to be flat for drawing purposes. And then finally, along the top here, the three faces along the top, and of course the visor are curved, so we're going to do a little bit of different shading there. Standard shading process. Let's go ahead and create a new layer above everything. We're going to call this Helmet Lighting. And when things go bad, I like to check the audio every now and then. So, helmet lighting. And we're going to go and fill it with a value, a solid gray value of 50, because it's going to become a hard light layer like we've done before. There we go. So, helmet lighting layer, from up here in the mode, we want to change that to um, hard light. Now, of course, hard light mode, as we've used plenty of times before, essentially, if you've got a value on that layer that's greater than 50, it's going to make the layer below it brighter. When you've got a value <coughs> on that layer that's below 50, it's going to make the layer below it darker. So that's why it's great for applying shading. So let's get started here. Do, 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 do. We can take our helmet faces layer. I am going to use the region select tool, the magic wand tool up here. And we're going to select the first face. And we do have to go select grow by one pixel. This is, the reason we're doing select grow by one pixel is because the, the way this magic wand tool works, it doesn't really select the borders between the two color regions very well. So you'd often be left with this little one pixel blank line between your faces when you're done with the whole lighting and stuff and it looks kind of funny. This way you're going to make sure to get rid of that one pixel goofy looking border thing. So let's hide the helmet faces, go to our helmet lighting layer. Now of course as before our light source upper right hand corner so this face is going to be a little bit lighter than the rest of the helmet. So let's go give it, I don't know, it's kind of a fudging around Let's do 57. And we can just take a nice big brush and go whoop, just like that. So that. Sound effects are highly encouraged as usual. I just realized it's Monday night, so I'm on Twitch TV competing, competing against Bob Ross, aren't I? Poor choice. But oh well. Too late to do anything about that now. Okay. Helmet faces back up. Let's go and select the opposite side here. That's the lighting. I want the faces. Select to grow one pixel. Once again, it's to get rid of that one little one pixel line separation thing you're going to get between the different faces. Helmet lighting layer. Now this one's probably a little bit darker because it's in the shadows. So let's set it to like a 46. Hide our faces layer. And... Do, do paint. There we go. Select none. All right. So we got this little thing in front here, and actually in front there's a bit of a 3D effect going on because it is a bit of a respirator. He's got. It's gonna have some little fin, cooling fins and such. Even though he's on a vacuum planet, this helmet can be used in different situations. That's why it's a respirator. <laughs> Like breathing in heat? How can he breathe? There's no air. You're correct. Okay, anyway. So I think we're just going to leave this color here more or less be the just basic flat color. Um, because it really doesn't necessarily need to be a brighter color per se. I'm actually going to turn down the brightness 
of this other yellow side here. I think I made it a little too bright. Select row one pixel. Let's make it 54 instead. We go a little bit darker. Okay, so let's get this little purple area selected. This is actually going to require a little bit of a little more fancier work because obviously the oops, wrong button. Because obviously we've got a situation where the right side from our perspective here is towards the light, and yes, right, the music does sound quite familiar. I imagine it does. I didn't give credit for that, because I think it's supposed to give credit when you use royalty-free music. So this music is actually from Triune Films. It's Ryan Conley of Film Riot. His massive selection. I've got, I'm playing most of them throughout the, the course of this video. I think I have about two-thirds of them in my little soundtrack here. So, um, so what was I saying now? Alright, so on the right-hand side here, this area of the face, because it's basically pointing upwards, so it's facing the light. On the other side, it's in the shadow from the visor. So let's go ahead with the lighting here. And we actually want to make this a little bit brighter, because it's probably a little more direct at the light source than the side. Let's hide our helmet faces. And I am going to go like that and loop it around to right around there. Now the other side is gonna is in the shadow, so let's actually hold on. Let's reset that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and move that over to there. Now the other side's in the shadow a little bit, so we want to make that a little bit less than 50 so that it darkens the layer. Now, oh, that's a good question. Here's what I'm gonna do. Let me. Yeah, we'll keep going. So it's like that for right now. I'm actually going to go back down to my helmet faces. Select the yellow layer over here. Oops, me. And let's make this a little bit darker. Not by a lot, just a little bit. Because it's in the shadow more than that part of the helmet. That's good. Okay, select none. So now we need to handle this little transition right here where the light and shadow hit. So let's get our purple region selected. Let's get rid of that helmet lighting. And all I'm really going to do, how, should, how do I want to handle this? Let's just smudge this one. It's a very small little transition. There's about two main ways you can blend colors in digital painting. Smudging is one of the ways. And that'll look plenty good enough. So let's go select none. And you're starting to see we got a little bit of the shapes going in here. Oh, that's what happened. Yeah, the, it bled over in the helmet a little bit. Or the visor. That's why the little bit of the visor is brighter there. That's what I'm looking at. Um, the the little purple area, by growing it one pixel, move it into the visor region, that gets fixed later. So don't worry if you start seeing little artifacts like that. We're going to clean up all these edges a little bit later anyway, just like we did with the vest. Okay. Now, face mask back up. The red and green faces here are both facing away from the camera. Actually, from the camera. They're actually facing straight towards the camera. They're facing more or less away from the light source. So those are actually both going to be darker. And the green one is actually recessed below the red one. Um, let me bring up my little sketch thing. And let me explain to you what I mean by that. So if we were looking at this guy from the side here, here's So here, this would be the red face. This is the red face right here. The green one's recessed down here, where this would be the front of the mask. So that's going to make this guy even a little bit more darker because not only is he facing away from the light, but he's hidden in the shadow of the light come down on this one. Take that away. Helmet faces. Let's go back and reselect the red guy here. 
same dealy select grow one pixel and we're gonna make it a 40 let's do 43 you know we'll do 44 for this guy so hide that go to the helmet lighting layer and we're gonna paint on our darkness 43 color and let's go back to our helmet faces select the green one which I mentioned a moment ago it's in the shadow of the red face there and now let's take our color and we're gonna make it even darker like we'll say 40 make it 40 so it'll be even darker and there you go now this starts leaving the top of the helmet Here's where things start to get a little bit interesting because there it's kind of a mix of angles and curves. So let me bring my face mask up here. The way to think of it, where the two yellow sections meet the green section, there is a little bit of a break there. Not a huge one, but a little bit of a break. So within each of these three sections, there's going to be a bit of a gradient to the light. And then along each of these breaks, there needs to be a relatively noticeable several value change so here's what I'm gonna do um, this face right here that I'm gonna select the yellow one here from our perspective which is on the whoops that's the wrong layer why is there two helmet lighting layers How did that happen? Um, yeah, somehow I ended up with two helmet lighting layers. I must have accidentally duplicated something. Let's delete that one. Okay, we're good. All right, I don't know what happened there. You can often with these software, this kind of software, you hit a button, something, who knows what happens. It's important to build it, get back to where you were. Okay, let me go and select on the face mask layer, the yellow thing, the yellow face. Select grow one pixel. Now this one is probably the brightest one facing towards the light. And in fact, it's actually probably brightest right in the middle. Because as it slopes down here, it gets maybe a little bit closer to the ground, a little bit further from the brightest point. And same thing at the top. So let's start with this average color. Let's give it an average color of or our, let's say darkest color darkest color of 56 so this is the darkest color this section is going to have and then what I'm going to do is make what the brightest color is going to be it will be 59 and I'm going to use the gradient tool, which is the shaded looking thing here. We're going to click on that and make sure we have our tool options selected, a little control panel icon right there. Uh, gradient we want to use is, is foreground to transparent. So that way it's going to basically make an area brighter and eventually fade the transparent, allowing the current color, which is the darkest color, to show through. And then. Um, Shape is going to be bilinear, so it's going to create the brightest point in the middle and spread out from there. And now, how you use the bilinear gradient? Select in the middle. You start in the middle of where you want the gradient to appear, and trace to the outside and let go. There isn't a huge change there, is there? So let's undo blend and let's crank up the brightness. The layer like 64, so it's really bright. I do that again. There we go. Now you can see there's actually a bit of a streak of light there. It's a matter of just getting the right angle that you think looks good for your helmet. There we go. So now we've got a nice bright streak of light. And we're going to apply similar effects to the other helmet faces. And you're going to use something kind of similar with these other layers. So let's start now with the... 
green one, magic wand, select the green area, select grow one pixel, let's hide it. Um, we're going to make this one be brighter than normal, but not as bright as this guy is. So let me get the color picker out here. On the helmet lighting layer, let's select that. And we've got a value of 56. So let's make this one be 54 as its base color. So just like that, that's our base color. So you can already start to see a little bit of a shape forming here. Um, not fully there yet, and of course there's the jagged edges between the armor panels, or between the angles, we'll fix that a little bit later. So right now we're getting, like I said, the very basic shape by the lighting. And this one is such that pretty much the brightest area is going to be on the right hand side, going to the darkest area on the left hand side. Um, what do I want? So this is the brightest color, I guess. So the brightest color is going to be 54. We'll make the darkest color start to be a little bit darker, like 46. Now we're going to use a gradient tool again, but this time we're going to just do a linear gradient. And we're doing foreground the transparent. Now foreground, of course, is the 46 color, which is going to make things a little bit darker. Let's go from the dark end over here, across. And there you go. You can start to see if we do select none. You've got a grading open brighter to a little bit darker. And probably, since this is actually facing straight up and down, we probably shouldn't do that. Select, edit, undo that. Um, undo the blend. I'm going to make it a little bit... Hmm. Here's what I'm going to do. Let's make it be 49 as foreground. Let's set, we're going to set the background color at 54. And we're actually going to use the foreground to background, not hard edge. Foreground to background, one of the two hue saturation values options, and we're going to do the linear gradient again, and that'll probably look a little, a little bit better. Uh, wrong direction. Yeah. Make sure the darker side is the value you want. Let's do a little bit different. There we go. Let's even not even do that. Just let's make the gradient very tight to represent this side of the helmet is sloping away from the light now. Select none. And you're going to start to see how it's starting to slope away from the light. And then finally we have this last face over here that we're going to select. And now we know it needs to be darker than where this one ended up at. So let's get our helmet lighting layer out. Select this color right here, which, what was that? 49, so let's start at 47. And we're gonna make it go down to a darkness of 41. So it's really kind of sloping away. All right, so the darker one is selected. Or is the sorry, darker one is the foreground color, a lighter one is the background color. So that means we're going to go draw the gradient from darkest to lightest. Hide the faces. Dark, let's do that again because it just kind of jumped around. Darkest to lightest, let go. There you go. Now select none, and you can start to see we're getting our helmet shape in there. And finally, we have this face that kind of rings around right here. That's It's facing towards the camera, or towards our perspective, but not the light. So the, that's the blue region that's going to be darker. That's not what I wanted. Helmet faces. Select grow. 
my pixel, and we're gonna just make that one be 44. We'll try that, see how that looks. Actually, that probably should be the same value as that, as the red face. So, but we need some differentiation to identify that there's a little bit of a, a differentiation there. But we'll deal with that in a little bit. Alright, so we've got the basic shape of the helmet going there. Got some clean up to do, but that's the basic shape of things. And then we've got the visor. Ooh, the visor is going to be really kind of tricky. Because it is kind of this funny oval shape thing so a linear gradient isn't quite what we want so I'm probably gonna actually do this one manually all right let's select the visor now the visor of course is gonna be some high re highly reflective material which honestly doesn't make a whole lot of sense being that it's like a helmet in potentially military situations but who cares it looks cool if we do it that way right So let's decide, we're going to make it, let's first pick, what is our darkest value? So let's, darkest value is going to be 38. I don't know why, I just chose it that. So let's fill in the entire layer, 38, and make it nice and dark. And make sure I grow it by one pixel just to, there we go. Now, considering the way the light is focused, our, the brightest area is going to be right along where I'm drawing my cursor right now. Um, it's going to be a little bit a little bit uh, brighter here and here, but the brightest is right along here. So let's kind of apply our second brightest color. I want to make this actually be bright. We'll make it like 45. And you want to kind of simulate the look of a visor of an angled visor here and there's a hard edge there but we'll fix that in a little bit now let's keep making it brighter and basically we're going to narrow that region down each time we make it a, um, steps brighter And I'm probably going to end up changing the color underneath the two in a bit. So let's go ahead and make it brighter again. Oops, okay, we need to reduce the size of the brush. It's getting too thick. Detail time. Everyone, I'm just kind of cleaning up the shape of it, making it look. Um... Oh, it also would be getting a little bit darker here in the front. Um... But I'll fix that in a minute. And then finally, let's make our brightest, brightest streak area. Should be here somewhere right along there. So that more or less approximates, 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 whatever. That'll work. That's that's approximately where the different regions of light are. Now we got to smooth them out. But first, like I mentioned, the front would be a little bit darker than the top, just because of the fact that if you look at the visor, it does um, slope down. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take a really dark color, like round three, change the paintbrush mode to subtract, Oops, make sure I do it all in one stroke. It's very important when doing the subtraction. What this is going to do is basically make everything darker by a value of three. That's obviously what subtraction, it means exactly what you think it would mean. There we go. So now we got all our different 
possible reasons you're going to see. Now we need to smooth them out. Um, we're gonna show, I'm going to show you the other way of doing smoothing and shading. Now, as I mentioned, the smudge tool is one way of doing it, but the disadvantage of the smudge tool is that it smudges stuff. It literally it looks like it got smudged, which in small certain in certain ah, if in certain which in certain situations looks fine, but other ones it looks terrible. Like this, the smudge tool will look terrible. Um, also, you don't get a lot of precision control from the smudge tool. So what we're going to do instead is do multiple passes with the spray paint tool combined with a color picker. So let's keep the visor selected. Select the spray paint tool. Make sure it's on normal. And what you're going to notice with the GIMP, when you hold down second here there it goes okay <laughs> we got to click on yes yeah, we got to use the tool to um see you later Ryan so you got to use actually use the tool now when you hold down control what's going to do is it's going to turn your cursor into the color picker just like that so let's go to the boundary regions here and on either side doesn't matter which one you can start either side use the color picker tool Reduce your change, change your brush to like a hardness of 50. We we'll even make it smooth, softer. Let's do a hardness of 25. Um, start with about a 20 pixel brush. Obviously, the larger is gonna larger or smaller brush is gonna depend depend on exactly how the shade looks, the shade appearance looks. And then let's just using the paint or using the airbrush tool. Let's run along the boundary a few times. And now what you're going to do is kind of keep repeating that process. So I'm going to take the tool, or take the color picker tool, select the region I just painted on, which is going to have a value that's an average of the two sections, and just kind of keep pushing it along. And you go back and forth doing that process until you get something that you do end up kind of liking. This does take some practice, so if you know it's if it doesn't come out right the first time, it's not the end of the world. It's definitely a you need some finesse to it. But once you kind of get the method out, method the process down, you, you can create some really nice, very good looking shading with it. Especially if you got different colors like red and blue or lights and darks, it can be used in pretty much any kind of shading situation. And be sure to work on both sides of your original line so that it completely gets rid of the actual very sharp um, edges. Now one thing you're noticing, it does look like I had a very striated appearance right here. This is kind of a bit of a breakdown of human vision and also a limitation of what the GIMP can do. Because the brightness between these two, or the value change between these two sections is actually not that much. It's about 8 to 10, especially if you have less of a value change, even a much smaller gradient. You, you're literally reaching the limits of what digital painting can actually show you. So that's why you can see individual striations because you're literally at this, basically breaking up. I wonder how I'm going to try and explain this. You're basically at the limits of what the color, the value range that can be shown here. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. I don't know if it does. I'm really hoping it does. With, if it does, it's one of those things that with time, it'll be clear. Oh, so that's what's going on. 
So you, off, you really can't get rid of that effect. But you notice if you, if you start to zoom out, it's going to be get more and more blend away just the way the human eye works. So th you only really see it when you're up cl close like this. And same thing for these sections. You're going to do the same exact process. Choose your colors on either side. Using the airbrush tool, apply it like that, and it's just going to blend itself away. And there you go, you've got your blending more or less done. I mean, you can you can spend a lot of time just fiddling with it, it's up to you. Um, just keep in mind, what I'm doing right now, I'm pretty heavily zoomed in, so it isn't gonna necessarily look as good as it could. Z you know, zoom out to get a much better idea of how it's gonna look. Just kind of have a funny shape there. And what, you, what I am doing now, I'm just going to take the smudge tool and clean up, clean it up a little bit. Ironically, using the smudge tool, to clean it up a little bit. But the smudge tool is great for just maybe gently expanding regions and gently massaging, for lack of a better term, the shape of some of these like striations here. work it's not the easiest it's definitely not the most easiest technique to to um apply oh um, shoot i screwed that up shoot under eraser under eraser i really screwed that up actually but with some practice you can get it you can get it done um let's start applying some of the details to the helmet and we'll start up here in the front with this little respirator Let me bring up my face's mask again. What you can see, I actually didn't draw it in. I'll draw it in right now. And what there is is actually a little bit of a 3D respirator here. Let me draw a new color onto the face mask. You can see where that's supposed to go. Not subtract, normal. So imagine this is basically a little box hanging off the front. So how is that gonna work? Well, we're going to 
essentially give it a bit of a 3D appearance based on the angles and how they're facing the light. Of course, once again, our light is in the upper right hand corner. So let me select this box with our magic wand tool. We can go ahead and hide our faces layer. And let's get a sampling of what we're dealing with here. So here's our base color. Now the top and right side are going to be brighter. We'll make the top be the brightest side. And all I'm going to do is take the paintbrush tool of the size that I want. We'll do a six and run it across the top here, just like that. So now it's going to make the top look a little bit brighter. You can keep it at a six. We're going to decrease the brightness a little bit to 54 for the side. And I see the side. Now hold on, let me think here for a minute. I would not see the side. Same reason that, same reason where I was talking initially about how why you can't see the sides of the helmet, you probably wouldn't be able to see the side of this either. But we do need to have some sort of differentiation right here. So what I'm gonna let's imagine is not quite a box. The sides slope out a little bit so we can see them from our perspective, just to get a little bit of um, differentiation between. The, the respirator portion and the other face piece right here. So let's do that. And then same idea over here, we're gonna apply the other face, but it's gonna be a little bit darker because it's sloping back away from our point of our perspective, but it's in the shadow because it's in the shadow side of the helmet. Now you come, is that in the right side? The weird Krylon helmet. If it's off center, it's because the Krylon helmets are off center. But actually, I think one thing it probably makes it why it doesn't look quite right is I pretty much stuck up, took a box and stuck it on a curved face. We don't really believe that this is curved. So let me, using the smudge tool, Let me, I'm adjusting pretty much the top of this face to make it look like it's got a bit of a curve going to it. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to kind of push out the sides so they match where the curve face would be. That'll look good enough for now. Um, and I'm kind of straying into my territory where this isn't my strongest suit for sure. but. It, it, that is the basic technique you would use to create this kind of an effect. Alright. Let me clean up all the face edges of the face mask and then we will... Actually, I Yeah, we'll, let's clean up all the edges of the face mask and then I'll start adding some details to the mask itself. And how we want to do this, of course, because we have these nice sharp edges between all the faces. I'm just taking the smudge tool. Let's do a size of five. We'll do a hardness 50 brush and just wiggle and move along the edges. And that, that will be the using the other technique for blending values. And it's good enough for this type of just very small blending of edges. And this is gonna make it the edges are just a little bit less distinct and a little bit more natural looking.
broken. Still pretty. That's right. It's gonna be fairly distinct because it is, you know, it is a sharp edge. So that's fine. That is plenty good right there. That respirator does look a little odd. Not gonna lie. Oh well, it's a it's a relatively small feature on a much larger image, so I'm not going to worry too much about it, the fact that it does look a little odd. Alright, 10 minutes left. About 10 minutes to go here. So let me go ahead and just add some details to this helmet. Make it look a little bit nicer. So let's start with the face mask, or the respirator. We're going to give it some vents. And of course, a few streams ago I talked about applying textures where when you got a bright thing and a dark thing together your brain interprets that as something rising out of the um, out of the picture assuming that the bright side is facing the light and dark side is not and the bright side comes first so that, that's a few streams back so let's take a uh, we'll use these are gonna be nice sharp things so let's use the paintbrush Let's put a value of three. Change our paintbrush to addition. So it's gonna add to the value of the pixels as we draw it. And we're actually gonna start drawing some straight lines here. I can go over the areas again to make some of the middle of make the middle of them a little bit brighter, and why not one more time just make it even a little bit brighter? Now change the mode to subtract. Is that op exact exact opposite effects going on here? It's going to make the values darker, and we're going to just right to the left of these lines. We're going to draw a darker region effectively making a shadow that's being cast by the raised line up and as you can see it there it's going to instantly kind of make your mind think that there's something sticking out of the front of the respirator which is the effect we're trying to go for and why don't we make some scratches and grooves in here too so whereas when brightness first comes when basically it was light source bright dark that your brain interprets that as a, as a raised up thing. When it goes light source, dark, light, it's gonna interpret that as a valley. So here we go, let's add some scratches. So we're gonna draw the dark section first. So it's pretty much like his helmet got beaten up a little bit here for some reason. Then change the mode to addition. And you don't really want to have a huge contrast of value here, just a little bit of one. And we zoom out, and you got a little bit of an effect of scratches going on there, which I don't know if that's what you want to do, is what you want to do, right? Next. Now, as I mentioned, these faces are the same value because they're essentially facing towards the camera at the same angle and basically away from the light at the same angle. However, there needs to be a little bit of separation to them because this face that we had called the red face is a little bit closer to the camera than the blue face. It kind of sticks out a little bit. It's a sensor thing, right? Hide that. Actually, no, let's, let's bring this back up. We're going to select the blue area using the magic wand and let's going to turn it off, go back to our helmet lighting area phase. Let's take a, an airbrush this time. We're going to do a value of 10 and we'll do a, yeah, we'll do a 13 size brush and we're going to go over it a few times with the mode of subtract and it's going to create the illusion that there's a nice sharp shadow right there. And you're going to get a little bit of a separation and also give it a little bit of a, a look. And we're actually going to make that a little bit darker too. So that'll help cast, make it look like there's a little bit of a shadow and this thing sticking forward just a little bit. So you can do a lot with these light, with light and shadow to do things like that. 
All right. Now we're gonna make some little crater, some pits in here that are, represent sensor points. So here we go. Same thing as we just did with the scratches, but we're gonna make it make craters essentially. So dark first. That's too big. Using the airbrush this time to subtract, make a little bit of a conical, half conical shape with the airbrush in both these. I'm actually going to put a little bit of a shadow there too to give more of an illusion that this thing is underneath that one. Then we're going to go to addition and fill in the half conical shape on the other side. And if we did that right and zoom out, it's going to look like there's little divots in there. Like there's some sort of, they're going to be recesses for sensors. And we're actually going to take the paintbrush, do a value of normal, do a really small thing, and just make this insides be really dark. I don't know what they are, but there's some sort of sensor hole, something or another, in, down in there. And what other details does this helmet tend to have? Oh, it also has a lot of little armor panels. So let's make some of those armor panels. And those, those are just the valleys once again. So let's take out a paintbrush. We'll go to a value of like three. Start with subtract. Let's go jute, jute, jute. And it goes kind of like a zoot, zoot, zoot. I'm going to go through with the mode on addition and now just to the left of each of these lines we're going to add the addition tool and make that just a little bit brighter. And just because of how the perspective works out it's going to make it look like you've got a little valley because the light source is the upper right hand corner of the screen. to the right or the left? I meant to the left. <laughs> I don't know what I said. I might have said to the right, which would be a, a incorrect statement. So there we go. You can start to see I've got a lot of bunch of little armor panels and doodads going on there. Um, last thing I'm going to finish up with is going to be a... Um, I need to make it blue tinted to match his armor. I probably should make it blue tinted. And we can apply some of those little chipping textures too, but 
I did that I did that last time. If you wanted to actually make apply these little rust or chip sections to his helmet, you can do that as well. I did that last time during the vest tutorial. I don't need to really run through that one again. The last things we're gonna do here, let's give the helmet a bit of a blue tint. So helmet color. I want to select let's do what? Select all. But I don't want the visor because I don't want to change, you know, the visor. So magic wand tool, and you can see when you go to the control panel of the magic wand tool, you have the mode here. You want to choose subtraction, which is the third one, and let's click on the visor. And now what I've just done is I've got everything but the visor selected, which is great. Let's hide our. Oh, Oh, yeah. All right, so we can hide the helmet faces tool. We zoom out. You can see it's all selected by the visor, and we can take our color and let's tint it a little bit more blue to kind of match the color of the vest. So let's actually, where is my vest base color? Why don't I just use that? There we go. Helmet color. Uh, normal, just make it nice and big and go, oh dear. Uh, yes, that's what I also want to do. <laughs> On the helmet layer, let's lock opacity. So we can't add additional color to where there isn't any right now. Wow, that's kind of bright. Um, yeah, it's actually matches the rest of the suit, doesn't it? Feels brighter for some reason. I don't really know why. So let's knock it down a few value, a little bit of value. That's good. I like that. Select none. It still retains all the visor as well as all the lighting effects and things. And I might as well do one last little thing here just because to show you another effect you can use for sci-fi helmets which is a lot of times they have glowing eyes. Once again, totally useless for military purposes, but it looks freaking cool. So how do we do glowing eyes? Well, obviously he doesn't have glowing eyes. He's in a giant visor. But he does have little sensors here. And I'm going to make one of the sensors actually glow. Let's create a new layer and call it Sensor Glow. And we're going to put this above the lighting layer. Because what we're going to do, first off, is... Choose a color we're going to make it glow. It's going to be a reddish orange. Airbrush tool. Hardness 50. Make it too big. <laughs> you want to get a light glow because it's obviously going to illuminate the area around it a little bit. Normal. So let's just give it. This is basically. Eh, let's do it bigger. Um, so the first step here is we're going to apply the glow from the light to the various parts of the helmet. That'll work. So we just gave that area of the helmet a little bit of a red glow. Now we're going to decrease it down to a size of about 10, which is going to be the actual light. Make it a little bit increased value. Oops, don't do that. And right in the middle, tap a few times. And we're going to go through this process of making, basically decreasing saturation, which is going to make the glow go a little bit closer to white and therefore make your eye think it's a little bit brighter. And we're going to keep decreasing the size of your brush. Decrease saturation. Decrease size of brush. And one more level. And what this is going to do is pretty much make the very inside of the light be really bright. The outsides be still a brighter color, but dimmer. And that's one of those things about how your hum the human brain perceives color. It's going to view that as being a very intense source of light and brightness compared to around it. And it's going to look like a little light. There you go. It's got a little light in the little sensor area there. 
And that's something that can be applied, like I said, to glowing eyes, any kind of glowing light. Anything that glows, that's how you, that's the effect you do it, where you start with the base color and progressively get lighter and smaller towards the, whatever the middle of the source of light would be. And that's a pretty good place to stop for tonight. I spent the whole time on the helmet. Sure, so that, that'll work. Um, yeah, I'll stop it there for now. It's 9 o'clock. I'm ready to wrap this thing up. Uh, next time I'll start drawing his pistol, and after I get the pistol done, I'm going to clean this thing all up. Oh, i got to draw his neck still. So pistol, then neck, then I'm going to clean this thing all up, and take all these ridiculous amount of layers we have, merge them down the proper way to get to the final image, so that I can then do a shield and eventually the background. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> Once again, thanks for watching. I'm Jason, the creator of the Caladagia universe. You can learn more about Legends of Caladagia, a space combat miniatures game, or Caladagia Fleet Commander, a tabletop game of planetary invasion, by heading over to caladagia.com, which has been scribbling on your screen this entire time, I guess, as well as also in the sidebar over there. You can see that as well. Um, if you have any questions, you know, obviously you could just send me an email. Email us on caladagia.com or, of course, follow me here on twitch.tv and over on YouTube at caladagiagames.com where all the past broadcasts do eventually end up. So with that, thank you for watching and have a good night. Zero car Bolson enter the cadre system. Launch Operation Octavius. I repeat, Launch Operation Octavius. Civilian transports are under attack. We need more warships. Hostile forces of the land in the city of Dandria. Battle lines are holding. Maybe I'm just microphone test. I, I don't think I can hear myself talking during this, can I? Nope, I can. Note to self, don't talk while the video's on. Welcome to the overview of Caladagia Fleet Commander. I'm Jason, the creator of the game. Fleet Commander is a tabletop game of planetary siege set in the Caladagia universe. One player takes control of the invading Surakari, while the other player commands the defending Aragul fleet. As the Aragul, the goal is to hold off the invaders until a relief force can arrive to secure the planet. As a Surakari, the objective is to destroy the economic potential of the planet through a combination of blockades, planetary bombardment, and convoy hunting. If this can occur before the relief force arrives, the Surakari will win the fight. 
Kaladasia Fleet Commander is played in a series of turns, during which each player can take several actions. The most common action is region activation, which allows players to move units to a region, but each player also has a set of unique actions such as calling for reinforcements and launching convoys. At the end of each turn, a combat will be fought in any region which contains both invading and defending units. Each unit in the game has several simple stats that are used to fight the quick and deadly space battles. A dice mechanic is used to resolve hits and armor, and powerful cards called command cards are deployed to give your fleet the edge in combat. A planet has a number of resource tokens which represent the economic potential of the planet. Surakari blockades and planetary bombardments are used to destroy these resource tokens. If the invaders can destroy all the tokens before the relief force arrives, they have claimed victory. In addition to holding back the Surakari, the Aragul can win the game faster by safely escorting convoys in and out of the planet. Included in the base set Operation Octavius are two planets, Kaelin 6 and Cadre 4. Each planet has different fleet sizes, different victory point objectives, and different rules, which will require each player to use different strategies to claim victory. Future expansion packs of this game will add new planets and alternative ways to play Caladagia Fleet Commander. Thanks for watching this overview of Caladagia Fleet Commander. To purchase a copy of the starter set Operation Octavius, or to learn more about the Caladagia universe, head over to the game's website at caladagia.com.